Hey, so today I wanted to do a video um, about AVPD fantasies or daydreams or whatever you want to call them. Um, obviously, I've been thinking a ton about AVPD for working on my book and um, just generally trying to figure my life out. And um, I think that has increased the frequency of these sort of things for me. And they've already been pretty common in the past few years. So I just thought I should do a video about it. I said in my first video that I was going to. I never ended up doing that because um, I talked about how weird and specific they were, but then I thought about it and I'm like, these are kind of just daydreams. They're, they're not that weird. But part of the reason it felt so weird for me is because I never actually had daydreams before I started dealing with a lot of AVPD symptoms. You know, it wasn't like I was always focused. I'd be plenty distracted by anxious thoughts or doodling or sleeping, but I, I never really had any daydreaming at all. And then all of a sudden with AVPD, it started happening a whole lot. And the other thing about it is that they're, they're pretty specific and some of them are definitely not uh, daydreaming in the, in the typical sense of idle or positive. Um, so, so they're a little different. I figured I'd go ahead and do a video, video about it. Um, so there's a few different types of them for me that I'll go over in a minute, but um, Something that they all have in common is that they all have some specific sort of trigger, some something I'm doing or looking at or reading about or thinking about will just make me think something else that kind of feels involuntary, like I don't necessarily want to think it and I don't really realize that I'm going down whatever uh, uh, tangent it is that I end up thinking about. And it's not the sort of thing where I can just like stop it because I don't really realize I'm doing it. Um, it's also not the sort of thing that is extremely engrossing. Obviously if something happens to distract me in real life, then I snap out of it. It's not, it's not anything like that, but, and they are pretty brief too, but they tend to happen pretty much constantly at this point to me when I'm not actively doing something that distracts my senses. Um, I guess because these, these triggers are so common, but um, <clears throat> the other thing is that they sort of entail a specific thing every time. It's not, it's not some, you know, uh, abstract thing. It's a very specific dialogue between usually one other person and me. Um, but it's not really me. It's it's a version of me that <laughs> does the things that I wish I would do in that scenario, but <laughs> not not what I would actually do at all. Um, and I guess this is some weird maladaptation by my brain to <laughs> encourage me to try these sorts of things that it's coming up with, seeing like, look how good that could turn out. Um, and sometimes they do seem nice while they're actually happening. And it's, it's only afterwards that it's clear that they aren't, um, nice and they make me feel worse because, um, they don't only end up, uh, you know, containing thoughts that are unrealistic for me personally, like that's not really how it would go for me, but they also tend to be idealistic for, for anybody. Just like this went perfectly because, you know, I can't handle things going wrong. So my brain knows it's going to derail me if, um, if, if anything goes wrong. So it always goes perfectly, which is not how anything works. Um, so thinking about that tends to make me feel worse. And uh, after one of those happens, which is, like I said, all the time for me now, um, I try to deal with it by thinking about the real things that I'm trying to work on achieving and the progress I've made and then engage in any distraction that doesn't remind me of that, which usually is a very specific sort of loud music for me personally, but it would, it would be different for anyone else. And I am curious if anyone else deals with this because I've heard from a couple people, but this doesn't necessarily seem to be <clears throat> one of the most common uh, AVPD symptoms. Um, and it could, could technically be related to something else for all I know, but I've read a little bit about it and it, it doesn't seem entirely uh, exclusive to me or anything. I, I think it has something to do with AVPD, but yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. So if anybody else has experiences this sort of stuff, I'd be interested to hear about it. But so I'll talk a little bit about the three types I experience. Um, the first one, and I guess the least offensive, is um, 
success-based uh, daydreams, which are usually triggered if I'm working on something um, less with this book, but more with other books I've written, because to me, this book is not something that I'm really going to be proud of. It's just something I feel like I, I have to do. But, um, you know, other like fictional books I've worked on without finishing, <laughs> working on them would sometimes cause me to have these scenarios. And I'll give you an, an example. Basically, it'd be like talking to someone, reviewing the book, you know, like interviewing me and saying the book was really good and all this weird shit that I don't know. It's like my brain trying to tell me that somebody could like what I'm doing, so I should actually finish it. But uh, it doesn't. It doesn't really work out like that in practice because I don't buy it basically. But um, yeah, that's how those go. Um, another type is relationship based. Um, you know, uh, sometimes friendships, but more like romantic relationships. Just. Um, just basically imagining talking to someone that, that likes me because <laughs> that hasn't happened for me yet. But, um, you know, just really in any sense, uh, it doesn't feel like there are too many people that I know in real life that like me all that much, just not, not romantically just at all. So, um, you know, I have that sort of thing. And like I said, these, these are intrusive thoughts because, um, they seem nice while I'm thinking about them. Um, but then it's over and reality kind of hits and, uh, uh, they're not so bad when they're occasional. It's just kind of like, oh, that's funny. That's weird. But <clears throat> they've gotten a lot more common lately and yeah, it kind of sucks. It's just, it feels very obsessive, um, and makes me uncomfortable, but you know, that's what it is. And so, yeah, that's, that's why I'm talking about it. But the third one is by far the worst, and um, that is um, fantasizing about my death, um, which, yeah, I know that's kind of not something that everybody wants to hear about. I've already talked about feeling suicidal on this channel before, but <clears throat> obviously if you're not comfortable hearing about that sort of stuff, that's, that's fine. I get it, but um, it is something that has started happening for me quite a bit lately and it, it's happened before but it's just a little more right now I'm not not necessarily in a great place not that I'm saying I'm going to kill myself so don't don't take it that way but just just depressed um with all the stuff I'm working on it's it's not fun to think about but uh these sort of come in three different forms um themselves which is one just imagining myself dying naturally and one imagining myself attempting suicide and failing and the third imagining myself attempting suicide and succeeding so um um it's it's this i i can't explain why why i do this really it doesn't doesn't make as much sense as some sort of adaptation to make me feel better as the other two types might but it's just sort of this uh, feeling that, you know, I, it's, it's hard to <clears throat> feel like uh, anybody I know in real life uh, cares about me that much. <clears throat> and so it's just kind of like thinking, well, <laughs> if I died, maybe then people would, would understand that I really did feel this bad. I, it wasn't some sort of excuse um, or or exaggeration it's it was true and uh <laughs> i don't know it's just this weird sympathy fantasy i guess um just i don't know it's really weird but yeah so i just <clears throat> i thought i'd share a little bit about that sorry i got a little derailed there but um yeah um definitely intrusive thoughts and not fun and um just thought i'd share a little bit more about that and i was curious if any of you guys had um could relate to doing that in general but you know the specific sorts of things that trigger it and the specific way it goes down because like i said it's always these these dialogues so um even if i'm 
imagining my death. That one doesn't necessarily involve me. It might involve a suicide note or something. Um, or it might just involve other people talking about me. Just my brain trying to show me that people do care about me, I guess. Because, you know, it, it can be hard to believe that. Even, even if people try really hard to make you believe it. So, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, I'm sorry <laughs> if this was too depressing. And I'm a little extra smiley today for whatever reason. And it doesn't really fit the mood. But it is what it is. Anyway, uh, thanks, guys. Talk to you later.